Hey guys, it's Kay. I hope you're all well. Now in today's video, I'm going to show you my most fun and rewarding things that I've done with my NVIDIA Shield TV Pro. Now these projects include using the NVIDIA Shield TV as a retro emulator to play tons of games, and also using the TV Pro as a media center to store all my movies and stream them to other devices around the house. I've also been able to access my work PC on Windows 10 through my NVIDIA Shield TV Pro, so I'm able to stay productive while I'm gaming. And lastly but not least, I'm able to stream live video and video on demand straight to my NVIDIA Shield TV Pro. So guys, if you're interested in any of these projects, please do keep on watching and also consider subscribing to the channel for more content like this. I'm frequently producing two or three videos a week. So subscribe and hit that bell for notifications so you know when I release a new video. So you can play your favorite PC games on your big screen TV. And the icing on the cake is that you can even set up an emulator for retro gaming. Now the games emulator in question is RetroArch. Now for those of you who don't know, RetroArch is a front end for emulators, games engines and media players. It lets you run classic games for a wide range of computers and consoles through its slick graphical interface. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to install RetroArch and install some games and then play them. I'll also be showing you how to connect a Bluetooth controller. Now in my case, this controller is the PS4 controller. But you can of course use any Bluetooth controller. Okay, without further ado, let's get on with it. So once you switch on your NVIDIA Shield, this is the home screen you'll see. What you'll get is recommendations for movies, TVs, shows, apps and games. Now you can manually sort your apps or you can enable automatic sorting based on your usage. And all your settings are just a press of a button away. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is pair a Bluetooth controller. So click on the settings button and scroll down to remotes and accessories. And then scroll down to add Bluetooth accessories and select. The Shield is now in Bluetooth search mode. You now pick up your Bluetooth controller and put it in pairing mode and eventually it will be found and it will show up on your screen. And the pairing process will begin. Once you get the following message, just select it and that's it. You now have a Bluetooth controller that works with your Shield. So getting RetroArch is just a simple matter of going to the Google Play Store and searching for RetroArch. Now you'll come across two versions, the 64-bit version and the 32-bit version. I chose the 32-bit version. Obviously you will have to wait for it to install. I've already installed it. Now this is RetroArch's front end. And as you can see, it's picked up my Bluetooth gamepad. Now, on first glance, this all looks very daunting. But don't worry, I'm going to guide you through this. Now, the first thing we're going to do is download a core, which is a plugin tailored to work with a particular platform you're trying to emulate. So, for example, before playing a PlayStation Portable game, we need to download a core that supports PlayStation Portable. So, that's exactly what I'm doing here. Once you select it, it will download and extract it automatically. I'm also going to download the Sega Genesis core, also the Sega Pico Drive, and not forgetting the Sega Dreamcast, and also the Super Nintendo, and why not the Nintendo 64? And last but not least, the Nintendo GameCube. Okay, now we've finished that, we need to scroll all the way back to the main menu, and we're going to scroll down to Online Update here. From here we're going to select Update Installed Cores. Now this just makes sure we have the latest version of the cores we just downloaded. Okay, back at the main menu, we're going to go down to Settings, and scroll down to Input, scroll down to hotkeys and select menu toggle gamepad combo. Now I'm going to select L3 and R3. This allows you to exit any game to the main menu. Okay, now the next thing we're going to do is scan for our games ROMs. Now I can't tell you where to get these, but a simple Google search should suffice. So you want to go down to storage and you should look for a folder that contains a lot of numbers in its name. And as you can see, I call my folder RetroArch and within that folder, I have all the individual games folders. And what you need to do is scan these folders for the games. So I'm going to go through each individual folder and scan for each of those individual games. Okay, so the next one I'm going to do is PlayStation. Now the next one is the Sega Mega Drive. Now I have quite a lot of ROMs for this, so it can take quite a while. So meanwhile, I'll also scan for my SNES games. Okay, now when the majority of that is all done, you can scroll down and you'll see some new folders with some snazzy icons. I've got my Mega Drive, Nintendo 64, PlayStation Portable, and my Super Nintendo. Now my Mega Drive folder is still scanning in the background, but that's okay you're still going to be able to play the games it's scanned so far. Okay, let's try some PlayStation Portable games. So I think I'll try Mortal Kombat first. Click on Run, and then choose the emulator you're going to run it with. So PlayStation Portable. So the core is now set, and we just play. Now the Nvidia Shield should have no problem playing these games. It's got more than enough grunt under its bonnet to handle all the mechanics here. Now as you can see the gameplay is fluid and it's fast and there's no screen tearing.
Now I'm going to try my Mega Drive emulator next. And I think I'm going to go with Aero Acro Rat. So again we click on Run and then associate the core. And this time I'm going to use the Pico Drive. Okay, so this is a horizontal scroller on a timer. Now getting at the game, we just press those hotkeys we assigned earlier, which was L3 and R3. Let's take a quick look at body count next. Again, click run and then associate the core. And really it's as simple as that guys. So this is more of a shoot em up. Okay, now I'm going to try Nintendo 64. Okay, let's try a bit of Super Nintendo and Donkey Kong. Ok guys, I'm back on the PSP and I'm going to have a go at MotoGP. And that's it guys, you now have your system up and running and you can play to your heart's content. Now whilst that all seemed a lot to set up, it doesn't really take more than a few minutes once you have all your ROM files. Now with RetroArch installed, you have one device for streaming media, playing new games and then playing your favourite vintage games also. Now if you're like me, you're working from home a lot more than usual. And that fine line between work and play can get blurred in these times. And in my case, it's got blurred even more recently. That's because I've discovered a way to combine work and play, both on the NVIDIA Shield TV. Just imagine for a second that you're playing games, consuming content, all on your NVIDIA Shield TV. And then you suddenly realise, there's some work you should be doing. And then, just like magic, you're on your Windows computer doing some work, and you haven't left the couch. So how is this achieved? Well, it's all through one app. And this app has been developed by a reputable company allowing you to use Windows 10 and Android TV all on one single machine, the NVIDIA Shield TV. Now in this video, I'm going to show you what it's capable of and how you can install it on your NVIDIA Shield TV. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, keep on watching. If you're new to the channel and you want to stay up to date with the latest tech tutorials, reviews and unboxings, I do everything including Fire Stick, Raspberry Pi and Android TV tips and tricks. So subscribe and hit the notification button. Okay, so this app basically lets you connect to your Windows PC seamlessly via your Nvidia Shield TV. 
Now to use the Windows PC environment on your NVIDIA Shield, you're going to need a couple of things, which are a mouse and keyboard. And to keep things simple, I'm using a Logitech MX mouse and K400 keyboard. Links for which I've left in the description below, in case you want to copy my setup. Now as you can see, we've got full access to Windows features, including the menu system and all its tiles within. And I'm not experiencing any major lag or stuttering. And of course, we've got access to the famous Cortana, which admittedly I don't really use, but it's there if you want it. And we've got access to Windows Great App Manager. So let's take a look at web browsing. Open up a new tab and type in a search. And again, no lag, almost instantaneous search results. Now considering this is going over my Wi-Fi, this is a pretty good result. So now I'm gonna go into video and see what it's like. So let's go into YouTube. Now, as you can see guys, it's all working well up to 1080p. Now there is a slight bit of lag showing with his voice, but that's to be expected. When you factor in, you are mirroring your PC over the Wi-Fi network. And this can vary depending on the speed of your network. And now I'll just shut up for a bit and let you see for yourself what it's like. Now, like I mentioned earlier, we've got full access to Windows and all notifications. So if you are working, you're going to get the notifications here in the side panel. And of course, we can also access video conferencing. Now, I can imagine this working with a Wi-Fi camera connected to your PC. Now, the other cool feature I like using is the picture in picture feature on YouTube. So you can have it running in the background while you're doing your work on your PC on your NVIDIA Shield TV. It all sounds a bit futuristic like the movie Inception with Leonardo. And the cool thing is it even plays a video while I'm switching apps. I'm in multitask in heaven. Now I did also try playing my favourite game League of Legends on PC. But of course in full screen mode it doesn't work. I was getting a graphics handler error. Now if you don't know, you can actually play League of Legends in a windowed mode. But I've yet to try using it in windows mode. If any of you guys out there does have a go at this, let me know if you get this working. Now the other cool thing about this app is that you can log on to your PC with multiple accounts all from your NVIDIA Shield. So here you can see I've got my two accounts that I've got on my PC. Now if I log on to the other PC, you're going to get this message pop up telling you that if you continue to log on, you're going to log out the other user, which is you anyway. So I'm going to click yes. Now it's saying it's waiting for that other user to respond. So I'm going to log back into that account and respond. Click OK to say you're happy to be logged out and it lets you know that someone else logged in. And it's as simple as that, you're logged in as the second user on your PC now. Okay, so what's this app called and how do we get it on our Android TV? Well, if you haven't figured it out already, this app is from Microsoft and it's called Remote Desktop. And to install it, we're going to sideload it. So we're going to go into the Google Play Store and download one app, which is called Downloader. So if you do a search for a Downloader, you'll find it there, just download it. And once you've downloaded it, open it up and enter the following address. B I T full stop L Y forward slash two capital N capital E Z capital O X Z and press return. Now this will start downloading and it'll take a couple of minutes depending on the speed of your network. Once it's done, you'll get the following screen. Just click on install and it should take another minute or so to install. Then just click on done and you can delete the APK file as we no longer need it. Okay, now that's done, we can open the app. Now you won't find the app in the normal applications folder. You'll need to go into settings and scroll down to apps and then see all apps. And then just scroll down until you find it. Once you've got it, click on open. As you can see, I've already set up a user account for connection to my PC. But don't worry, I'll add another user just to show you how to add an account. So taking a quick look around, if we click on the hamburger menu, we've got the general settings and we've got the option to enable pinch to zoom, which is great if you've got a touch screen. Now under display settings, we've got the option to auto adjust orientation and we've got default resolution and we can match the device resolution and we can also add a custom resolution. Now we've also got the option to scale our display. But as it says below, this can affect performance. Now next item down is gateways. Now this is a great little feature. By adding a gateway, you can connect to your PC from anywhere in the world with an internet connection. Now the next menu item down is user accounts and below that is about. And like I mentioned earlier, this is an official app by Microsoft. And if you scroll down, you can see all the official blurb. Now next down on the menu is a little help section. And below that, we've got a watch new section. And this is interesting, they've added support for the Samsung DeX system. Okay guys, that's enough of that. Now I'm going to show you how to set up a new user to connect to your PC from your NVIDIA Shield TV. Now you just need to click on the plus sign at the top here and click on desktop. The app will automatically scan for any nearby PCs. So I'm just going to select my PC and then select the pull down menu 
And here you can choose to add credentials every time you log in, or you can add an account and save it, like Tech Figure here. Now on this occasion, I'm gonna add a new user. So type in your username, which in my case is my email address, and then follow it by your password. Now once that's done, click on connect. And that's it guys, you now basically log on as usual. Or you can log on as your other user by simply clicking on the hamburger menu and selecting him. Anyway guys, if you found this video helpful, give us a like and maybe even a subscribe. So what is Plex? Well, Plex is the most popular media server available. Now with Plex on your Shield TV Pro, you can host and access your own media, including movies, music, photos, and these can be viewed anywhere an internet connection is available. And the great thing is, the Shield TV Pro comes with both Plex Client and Plex Media Server pre-installed. Now the Plex Client allows you to access content from any existing Plex Media Server, which can be running on a PC, a standalone NAS with Plex Media enabled, or on your NVIDIA Shield TV. If you're new to the channel and you want to stay up to date with the latest tech tutorials, reviews and unboxings, I do everything including Fire Stick, Raspberry Pi and Android TV tips and tricks. So subscribe and hit the notification button. Now, to get the best out of my NVIDIA Shield Plex server, I'm adding a shed load of storage in the form of an SSD. And I'm going to use this, the Sabrent 2.5 SATA hard drive SSD to USB 3 adapter. Believe me, that's a bit of a mouthful. But who cares, as long as it works. So as you can see, the important thing is, it's plug and play, and it's hot swappable. Now, for the SSD, I'm going to be using this Kingston 240GB drive. This should give my NVIDIA Shield a boost in speed and space. So, up close you can see the Sabrent cable is going to fit perfectly to the SSD and the USB 3 port of the NVIDIA Shield. All that remains to be done is connecting the Sabrent cable to the SSD. And like it says on the box, it's just plug and play. Perfect fit. Now we just need to connect the other end to the USB 3 port of the NVIDIA Shield, but there's a few things we need to do first before we do this. Now the main thing you need to do is connect your hard drive to your PC or Mac, and using a disk utility, format it to XFAT. Now if you miss this step out, you're going to get the following error message when you connect your SSD to your NVIDIA Shield. So once you've done that, you can safely connect your SSD to your NVIDIA Shield. Now back on the NVIDIA Shield, once you power up, you'll see a notification, and it should say USB Drive, tap to set up. Now if you do that, you'll get the option to browse, set up device storage, or reject. I'm going to scroll down and select set up as device storage. At this point, you're going to need to format the drive. Now give it a few minutes to do its thing. Now I'll speed this up for your convenience. So when it's complete, you're going to get two options to move your data now or move it later. Now this will move the majority of your data from your NVIDIA Shields drive to the SSD drive. Now I know I haven't got much data to move across, so I'm going to do it now. Again, give it a few minutes. Now it says data has been migrated to the USB drive, but to check, we're going to go into our settings and scroll down to device preferences and then scroll down to storage. And there you can see we have our SSD with 236 gigabytes. And if we select it, we can see how the space is distributed on the drive. Now with Plex's free account, you can get all the basic media organization and streaming capabilities. And it gives you the ability to cast to other devices, also giving you loads of support for tons of media formats, including 4K. Now the free account also lets you share your server with others, use Plex's VR app, and control playback with voice controls on supported hardware. So for the more advanced users, you can also get a premium Plex Pass account for a monthly subscription, which includes everything in the free account plus a host of other usability features. Now for this video, I'm going to concentrate on the free account, which offers some great value. So the free account streams a selection of movies and TV shows for all users. All you need to do is sign in and create an account with an email. Now they recently gained Crackle's entire library which significantly boosts the size and quality of the Plex catalogue. The movies and shows are organised with titles in horizontal scrolling categories. So you get recently added, most popular, top movies on Crackle, Plex picks, only on Plex for a limited time, and several other genre related ones. I can easily recommend Plex's on-demand library to anyone looking for a free video streaming service. Now Plex also offers a selection of live TV channels, there's easily over a hundred available. And some of the available channels include Docurama, Fubo, Sports Network, Retro Crush, Reuters, Reverie, Tastemade, The Film Detective, The Pet Collective, the list goes on. Now with the free account you can access all this live content. Now another great feature is that Plex also includes web shows. Now the web shows section highlights episodes and series of videos across a range of categories, including arts and entertainment, autos and vehicles, computers and electronics, health, science, sport and travel. If you find a show you like, you can add it to your My Show list. Plex also includes a podcast section. To get started, click on the podcast menu section on the left hand menu. So you can now browse through recommended or featured categories of podcasts such as popular, news and politics or society and culture. You can also click on the categories button to see the whole list of categories. Now there is a music section available by title. 
but that is a subscription-based service. Now to use Plex as a media server, so you can stream your own content to your tablets, phones and computers, just click on the settings menu down the bottom and scroll down to Plex Media Server and click on it. Now make sure the Enable Plex Media Server is ticked and then click on Next and you'll get the following message basically telling you you need to create an account to use Plex Media Server. So clicking on OK, you'll get the following message. Now as it says in the message, I'm going to go on my computer and type in the following address and enter the following code. Now on my browser on my computer, I've gone to the Plex TV link website and I've been asked to create an account. So I'm going to put in my details and here I'm going to use my Google Gmail account. Click on Create Account. And next you'll be prompted to input that code you got off your NVIDIA Shield. And here's mine as a reminder. So it's TCVF and click on link. And that's it guys, your account is now linked. So if you head on back to our NVIDIA Shield TV, you'll see the following screen. Make sure Create Default Libraries for Plex Media Server is ticked. Then click on Next. And then click on Allow Media Storage Permission. And then click on Next again. And then just wait for it to start up for the first time. Then eventually you'll get the following message telling you that the Plex Media Server is set up and complete. So if you go back to the home screen, you'll see that I'm logged into my account now. Now if we scroll down, you'll see that we've got a new section. Now this section is your own personal media section. And you need to fill it with your own media, so it's all empty at the moment. Now it does tell us that we need to use the Plex Web App to add media. Now it's important to clarify that the Web App will scan for media that's already there. But before we can do that, we need to get the media on our Plex server, which is on our NVIDIA Shield. Now of course you've still got access to Plex's online content. Web shows, news, podcasts, movies and shows, and live TV. Now just pop into settings and make sure that the Plex media server is up and running. And here we can see it is. Now the next thing we need to do is populate those empty media fields with our media. So the first thing we need to do is pop back into our settings on our NVIDIA Shield. And head down to Device Preferences. And then head down to Storage. And here go down to Transfer Files over Local Network. And make sure this is turned on. Now this will give you your Plex server information. So it's your username, your password and your IP address. And we're going to use this information on our PC to connect to our Plex server. So back on our computer, I'm going to open up a file explorer and open up a network connection. In the address field, I'm going to enter my NVIDIA Shield server address. And then click on connect. That will bring up another box and I'm going to enter my username and password. And I'm going to tick the box to remember password and click connect. Now what you're seeing here is our file system on the NVIDIA Shield. And we can see the folder called Plex Media Server. And under that I have created a folder called Movies. And I'm going to go into that folder. And I'm going to leave that there and open up another file explorer to copy across some videos and pictures. Copying the files across to your Plex server on your NVIDIA Shield shouldn't take more than a couple of minutes. It all depends on your network speed. Okay guys, that is done now. The next thing we need to do is make sure that this media is viewable on our Plex server on our NVIDIA Shield. And to do that, we need to open up a web browser on our computer. And if you just search for Plex TV app, it should come up. Here we just need to click on Sign In. And like before, I'm going to use my Google account to sign in. Now you can actually see I am logged in. You can see my logo over here on my account. So now I'm going to click on Launch. Now this will launch the Plex app on my PC. And it will be connected to my Plex server on my NVIDIA Shield via my network. So straight away we can see the home page, we can see Plex Media. Now to access the media I just transferred onto the Plex server, I need to click on More. And that will bring up another side menu on the top, and it's titled Shield TV. Denoting this is actually the media on the Plex server on the NVIDIA Shield TV. So currently all the submenus are empty. But we're going to fix this, so just click on Manage Library. And I want to put my videos in the Home Videos section, so I'm going to update that. Clicking on Edit brings up the following box. Now you can rename this folder to anything you want from here. But from here I want to add the folder I put my media in. So I click on add folders and then I click on the browse. And from here I just navigate to the Plex Media Server folder. And then I just select the folder I created within that, which is called Movies. And then just simply click on the add button. And then we can save these changes. So if we click back to go to the home screen and if we scroll down to home videos, you can now see my media. So let's take a quick look. And it comes up pretty nicely. Now I did forget to record the sound on my PC, but there is sound on the video. Now if you want to add pictures or anything else, you just go to the respective folder and repeat the process. So here I'm going to add photos, so click on photos, click on the add folder, navigate to where you got the photos, and then add the folder, and then save. And then just click on back to go to the home screen, and you should see them on your home screen. And you just click on the file you want to view, and it comes up. Now to view files on your mobile or tablet, it's a similar process. So on my phone, I'm going to open up the app. 
and all you have to do is sign in with the same account you have on your Plex server, which in my case is the Google account, and instantly you can see my files there, and I just simply click on it to play it. And it is just as simple as that guy setting up Plex on your Nvidia Shield TV. Can you use the Nvidia Shield TV as a NAS drive? And the short answer to that is, of course you can. And in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. If you're new to the channel and you want to stay up to date with the latest tech tutorials, reviews and unboxings, I do everything including Fire Stick, Raspberry Pi and Android TV tips and tricks. So subscribe and hit the notification button. Now there may be some of you out there who might be thinking, what's a NAS drive? Well, if you've got a lot of files like photos, music or movies, chances are they're sitting on a hard drive somewhere. Getting access to those files can be challenging without an expensive network attached storage solution. So yeah, it's basically a hard drive which is attached to your network, which can be accessed at any time. And like I mentioned, they can be quite expensive to buy, starting off at a couple of hundred for a decent one. And they normally don't come with hard disks installed, so you have to factor in the cost of the hard disk. So you can easily end up spending a couple of hundred pounds on hard disks. So you can see why I've turned to the DIY solution. Now, there's a couple of things you want to consider before using your Nvidia Shield as a NAS. Firstly, it's probably best to use a Nvidia Shield TV Pro as your NAS, as opposed to the cylindrical Nvidia Shield TV. Now the main reason for this is that the TV Pro has got USB ports, so you can attach your external hard drives. And the TV Pro has also got more RAM, which helps with video processing. The second thing you want to consider is using a wired network connection to your router. This will give you a faster and more stable connection for streaming video. And of course the third thing you want to consider is hard drives. Now I recommend using SSDs as you're going to get a faster file transfer speed. Now the last thing you want to do is set your Nvidia Shield to stay awake, so you can access your files whenever you want. Now I've left links in the description below on what equipment I recommend for this project. To connect my SSD to my Nvidia Shield, I'm using this cable from Sabrent. It's basically a SSD to USB 3 adapter, and I've used it in previous projects, and it provides adequate speed. And this is the SSD I'll be using. The SSD and cable just plug in like this, and the other end of the cable plugs into your Nvidia Shield. But there's a few things we need to do first before we do this. Now the main thing you need to do is connect your hard drive to your PC or Mac and using a disk utility, format it to XFAT. Now if you miss this step out, you're going to get the following error message when you connect your SSD to your Nvidia Shield. So once you've done that, you can safely connect your SSD to your Nvidia Shield. Now I have to confess in this part of the video, I'm using a different hard drive. It's a Seagate 5TB mechanical drive, but as you'll see later in the video, it works perfectly well. Now once you plug in the hard drive, you'll get the following notification. But even if you don't get this message, you can go into your settings and scroll down to device preferences and then scroll down to storage. Now once you get into here, you'll be able to see your attached storage. And in my case, it's a 5TB Seagate drive. And you can see I've got full access to that 5TB. So if we back out there, now to make this drive available over the network, we need to scroll down and click on transfer files over local network and then select turn on. Now this will automatically assign you a username and password and it will give you your IP address. Now you need to take note of this information as you will be using it to connect to your network drive from your PC or tablet later on. Now if you click on username you can change it and in fact I'll change it now. So I'm going to call it techfig and then press on next. Now in the same way you can also change the password but I'm going to leave it as it is. Now do remember to take a note of all this information. Now the whole purpose of a media server is having your media available when you need it. So the next thing we need to do is set up the Nvidia Shield so that it doesn't sleep. And to do that we need to enable the developer's menu. So go into your settings and scroll down to device preferences. Click on about and then scroll all the way down to build number. Now once you get to build number you need to click on it up to five times to get into the developer's menu. And you can see it's counting down here. And that's it, we should see the developer's menu on the main menu. So if we go back to the main menu and scroll down to the bottom, you should see the developer's menu there. Click on it and then scroll down to stay awake and toggle it on. Okay guys, so we are done for all the settings on the Nvidia Shield. We now need to go back to our PC or Mac and make a connection to our new NAS drive and try playing some media files over the network. Okay, so back on my computer, I'm going to open up the file explorer and what we need to do is make a network connection to the Nvidia Shield, which is now available as our NAS drive. So I'm going to click on create new network connection and it's here we need to refer back to our notes for our IP address. So it's 192.168.0.72 and click on connect. Now this will bring up another window and you'll be prompted to enter your username and password. So my username is techfig and my password is that long thing there. 
Now you can opt to remember the password so you don't need to enter it every time you log in, but I'm going to leave it as it is. And just click on connect. From here we just click on one touch which is my 5 terabyte drive. Okay, so we're into the contents of my 5 terabyte hard disk. Now I'm going to open up another file explorer and I'm going to copy across some more video media. Now currently I'm just running off Wi-Fi, so let's see how long it takes. I've got a 4K media file here which is nearly 700 megabytes. Now so I don't keep you guys waiting, I'm going to speed this up. Okay, so over Wi-Fi that took approximately one minute. That's not bad for a 700 megabyte file. Now of course this would be a lot faster over a wired connection, but I forgot to attach the network cable. So let's see if the Wi-Fi connection is fast enough to play the 4K file. Oh, it looks pretty smooth and stutter free so far. Now let's see what happens if I jump forward. And jump forward again. And again. So as you can see guys, there's no issues here, even over Wi-Fi. And I can minimize the window, move it around, and there's still no issues here. Now I did also try playing multiple streams from the Wi-Fi connected NAS NVIDIA Shield, but I ran into video stuttering and choppiness. So this time I'm going to try it with a wired connection, so I'm going to select the first one and minimize it, get it ready to play. And select the other video and get that also ready to play. And that just happens to be an old YouTube video of mine. Okay, so here goes, sit back and watch. I'll let the first one start up. And then start the other one up. Hey guys, it's Kay. Now recently I purchased an Android TV because my Hyfence TV just packed up. And to be honest, I'm kind of glad it did, because I've been enjoying the Android ecosystem ever since. Now a few apps like YouTube and Netflix got pre-installed, but for the rest, it's up to you. So for the best experience, you need a mix of music, video, productivity and system apps. So with that in mind, here's a list of my... Okay, so you can see in File Explorer the network address of the NAS drive. And if I try to eject the NAS drive, it'll say can't do that, it's playing the file. So guys, should you go ahead and set your NVIDIA Shield TV Pro up as a NAS drive? Well, in my opinion, yes. Why not? Just like a commercial NAS drive, your NVIDIA Shield TV Pro has got two USB 3 ports, so it's easy to hook up an external hard disk and share your files over your network. Now, it might not have any of the fancy features of a NAS drive, like one-touch backup, but it's got a gigabit Ethernet port, so if you wire it up into your network, it's going to give you seamless playback. And if you're like me, and you've got all your data currently scattered across a selection of external drives, it's an easy way to consolidate all your files into one place. Anyway guys, if you found this video helpful, give us a like, and maybe even a subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next one.